What do you think? Looks like a bare wall to me. This is our studio for the live video broadcast or tape recording video broadcast of Last Generation Network News. Some people call me the cynic. They might be right. You see, one of the things I learned a long time ago in writing was that people are easily influenced. They can be persuaded to do, to think, or to feel, or to believe in anything. Really. I learned that a long time ago in writing. I learned that you could manipulate words in such a way to cause people to experience emotions, to demonstrate believability, to feel something that you don't feel. That's what we call creative writing. Sadly, a great majority of what's happening in the news now is creative writing. It is the posturing of presenting information in such a way that you'll believe it, even though it's a lie. That you'll buy into it, even though it's just to occupy your time. That you will stop and watch long enough, that you'll capture your attention just short enough to get that extra minute, that extra second, that extra time so that some network or some person or some way, someone is going to make money off of you. It's not going to happen here. As a matter of fact, news has never been what some people say is the presentation of information in a nonpartisan way. It's never been that way. It's never been factual. Let's get real, straight up, just between you and I. I'm the managing uh, editor, so to speak, of the Last Generation Network News, and I'll tell you straight up. You can research any history on the news, and it's always been biased. There's always been a slant to it. There's always been a perspective. There's always been a way of presenting it so that you will look at things the way the editor or the article writer wants you to see them. They will be construed, they will be spun, they will be told, they will be retold, they will be edited to such a way to get your attention, to transmit some information. Now, there has been, in the industry, this idealism of, well, let's make sure we got the who, what, where, hows, and whys, and two or three sources covered so that, you know, we can congratulate ourselves on how accurate the news is and give ourselves, you know, the Philippine Moro Award or some other award or a Pulitzer or some other type of journalistic endeavor where we say, we reported the news. Even investigative news goes out with an attitude and an action and a direction and a perspective. So, knowing that everything is biased, you have to understand where that bias is coming from, or you'll never get the facts. You see, I know, because I've worked in the industry a little bit, that most of articles you see written are based on one-liners that come across AP, UPI, or Reuters, a news service. It comes across as one factual statement just simply says, 12 people die in earthquake in Timbuktu. Devastation happens in Timbuktu. Unknown sources have confirmed that there are 12 at least and maybe possibly so many more that have died in Timbuktu. It is unbelievable the amount of devastation that has been caused by this earthquake that has racked the world and caused such an outpouring and cry of humanity. Off of one line. One line. And yet that is what the news does. Makes it interesting, doesn't it? Even now, when people are trying to control the news, where they have a certain amount of responsibility to be accurate, because now we have these fact checks. You see, it got to be where it was so popular to spin the news that we had ABC, NBC, CBS, these certain 
broadcast news stations not only biased in one way, they were overly biased and they were way out of the touch of reality when it came to trying to give out just some basic information. And some other news services said, hey, we want to be the opposite bias, like Fox News or CNN. And so they got out the news by going on the internet. And that seemed like a good thing at first. But then you had bias versus bias. And then as each got more popular, they would each work to get more viewers, not based upon facts, not based upon truth, not based upon reality, but based upon appeal. We're the no spin zone. We tell the truth. We tell what we want to tell of the truth. What the truth is, is subject to the person telling it. And we all know that. Now, we may have, and we used to have, favorite anchors who we thought would give us, you know, kind of like what we thought, you know, the, we're one of them, you know. O'Reilly likes to say, you know, I'm with the people, you know, the common people. Because, you see, there used to be older anchors that used to do the same thing, and O'Reilly is a journalist where he researches things. He spends the quality time to investigate at least most of the facts, and then he comes up with his opinion based upon certain facts. And he won't just go along with the crowd. That is what a journalist is supposed to do, doesn't always do, because Bill O'Reilly also has his own perspective, as we all do, as I do. What has happened and caused us to come out of just doing Last Generation Network News and presenting the information and having videos now is the fact that you're being lied to. You're being deceived. You're being manipulated by governments, news services, marketing companies, prophecy experts, fellow Christians. You're being manipulated left, right, and sideways, and most of you haven't a clue what the real news is. I know, because I've had you confront me sometimes on some statements I've made about comments when you're reposting some of these false stories, these phony news plans, these reworking of details. I remember when I lived in Jerusalem, it was one of the times that I was talking to God about wanting to do a news service. And why I want to do a news service is probably insane, but anyways, I was working with a church in Jerusalem, and I was sending out the news articles and on the mailing list because every missionary and every supportive ministry in Jerusalem and in Israel has a mailing list that you send out on the internet, news from Israel, because it's a big deal. <gasps> wow, it's the end of the world, or ooh, it's from Jerusalem, it must be news. And so I remember how we used to get the news together, you know, it's kind of, never mind, you know, but oh well. And so, I was in Jerusalem at the time, and I remember going down to the Kotel, or Kotel, the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall, the Prayer Wall, where we go to pray to Daven, you know, and it's a wall like this, sort of, except it's made out of stone. <laughs> and there was a altercation of a few Jews stopping some other Jews from going forward to pray. I was there, so I saw it firsthand. That which I had seen, I witnessed with my own eyes, and I was able to tell of that experience with my own hands, and I was able because I heard what had happened. So as I read it in the news services in America, I read about the riot at the Wailing Wall, the riot that involved about six people. And it was a riot that funny, Nobody had real pictures, except for they were snapped just right, of what actually happened. I was there. I knew the truth. So what did our new service that day run with? We quoted J. Post. We quoted Haaretz. We quoted the new services that were in Israel 
as we always did using their writers and sent them on to our mailing list of the riot that had gone on in Jerusalem. Five people. Maybe six. It wasn't a riot. It was fun. And it was a lie. There wasn't any way to put around it. Today, in prophecy, in last generation, in many web pages you go to, in many ministries you're a part of, in many places that you get your information, you're being lied to. Because you're being given a part of it, but you're being blown out of proportion on purpose to hype your emotions. You're being given a lot of data that's been added to with adjectives that go on forever. I mean, shoot, if you cut out all the fluff, you'd have one line, just like API, UPI, and maybe Reuters sometimes. What we want to do in this expose, so to speak, but really this introduction is we're going to be building this wall. We're going to go out and get a chalkboard or a dry erase board and we're going to teach about what's called fallacy. When people try to put A plus B equals D, A plus B equals E, they always have these formulas of putting together pieces of information to make you come to a conclusion that's false. Because they want you to get excited so you'll keep reading and coming back for more. It's called a teaser. It's called a hook, line, and sinker. It's called a straw man argument. It's called a diversionary tactic. There are a lot of ways of manipulating you. And you don't know. I know you don't. Because you still go to those sites. You still participate in being deceived. You still allow your eye to see the lie. And then you go on with it and pass it on to other people and lie to them by way of the spirit of error that has come into your way of presenting information. I don't want you to. I don't want you to trust me. I don't want you to trust Last Generation Network News. I don't want you to trust anything you see on the Internet. I want you to prove all things. As a matter of fact, I want you to become a cynic. I want you to be cynical about every news story that comes to you, especially. I'll give you my rule of thumb. My rule of thumb when it comes to prophecy is 99% of it's false, and 1% might be true. Because when it comes to news stories, most of it does not fit prophecy. It's just somebody out there sitting on a blog going, hey, I need some readership. If I get so many clicks, I get some money, so I'm going to go ahead and make this. Or worse, what we call a true believer. Someone who really believes what they're doing. And they're really wrong, but they believe it. Kind of like the Yahoo Hushua's, you know, who have got this weird theology that they're so adamant about being wrong, they go out and change things on purpose. They'll take somebody's website picture, they'll change it, hack it, and put their own little Yahushua in it, and then put it back on. If that isn't crooked, what is? amazing to me. The Yahuwahs. I mean, some of these hackers that have now invaded into Christianity, you kind of go, are you a Christian? Huh, really? So, we will be presenting in Last Generation Network News, not just videos about the news, because that will come later when we have a desk and we can do a proper news service, but we're going to give a teaching beforehand. We're going to present fallacies and how to disseminate information, how to evaluate news articles, how articles are constructed. We're going to take apart, as it were, the pieces of a paragraph and show you what lies and what truth exist in just sometimes the news itself as you look at it. Once you know the truth, as Jesus said, the truth shall set you free. Because, you see, once you've seen it, once you've taken it apart, once you kind of like made a format out of it, it kind of gets easy to see the line. 
it gets easy to tell when you're being hit in the pocketbook for something that's not true. And I'm not going to slam names because it'll be obvious. I mean, you will see it and it will make you sick to your stomach. It's kind of like when we had, back in the 70s, you may not have known this, but there was a huge expose done about subliminal advertising. And what was happening was that the advertising agencies were putting on billboards out in the public obvious billboards that every man, woman, and child could see. Remember this. Every man, woman, and child. And they would take like a giant, oh, I don't know, Pepsi Coke with like, let's just say it was a two liter Pepsi you know, or a Pepsi, and it was pouring into a glass full of ice. What you couldn't see was that those ice cubes were couples copulating in nude figurines. Because you really didn't look at it that sharp. It didn't stand out that obvious. But when you were given, as later the exposés came out, the information to look back at it again, you saw them. It was almost embarrassing when it first came out because as you went down the freeways in Southern California and in New York and in Denver and anywhere else in the country, you saw what the major advertisers had done. Bacardi and beer commercials and all kinds of billboards where they were using all these sexual imageries in obvious billboards. And it's not an accident. It was a very well constructed manipulation. And they had done the same thing in the cinemas where they were using split second programming, which was technically illegal, but some of them were doing it, where you take a set scene, you know how the cameras go by, you know, they have these little squares, you know, that you see with pictures. Well, what they would do is they'd splice it and they would put one flash of, say, hot, you know, like a, a hot sunset or a desert scene, like hot desert with a person thirsty, just one picture. It flashed by so fast that you couldn't see it with the naked eye. It would subliminally pick up. The next picture would be someone drinking a Coke and just running down their throats, just so satisfying. And without knowing it, you'd be sitting there watching and you'd go, man, I'm thirsty. And you'd be going to buy a Coke. Because they proved subliminal advertising works. They proved it was effective. And then, fortunately, we've gotten watchdog groups as well as exposés from people to say, no, don't do that. And they quit. But it was a big scandal at the time. Now today, people would be sued left, right, and sideways. Back then, they just quit doing it. When you read the scriptures, Jesus talked a lot about the eye. He talked about how much it will influence and how much it affects you spiritually, which is why we at Last Generation Network News treat this so serious and why we're making this whole presentation right now to you. Because Jesus said, if your eye be full of light, how great is the light within. But if your eye be full of darkness, how great is the darkness. So if something's sneaking in, in the midst of light, if something's trying to lie to you, and you don't know what's right, then we need to, as responsible Christians, as I am being held accountable to God for every single idle word that's spoken out of my mouth, as well as everything that I post on these sites, I want to stand before God with hands that have been cleansed by mercy and grace. I need to, and I adjure you to watch these lessons that we'll be giving on fallacy, on programming, on teaching, on subliminal advertising, on lying, on suppositions, especially in prophecy. I know that Prophecy Research and Development is going to do a similar special. It's probably going to be 12 parts, I believe, and we're going to examine really how prophecy is right now more about probably than prophecy. And they'll show how a lot of these new quote unquote prophecies that have been discovered that are going to happen soon are just speculation. Nobody knows and nobody has a factual, actual scripture for it. And we'll show you that by the same methodology that we use here will be using here when we explain to you about fallacy and about how you are being manipulated with a little bit of fact, a 
lot of lie and a lot of, I would say, bulk. <laughs> Just a lot of overwhelming information. The other thing about the internet, and that's why we were bringing this up at Last Generation Network News, is that you are not trained to handle the internet at all. You just think that, most of you, that all you got to do is get an internet connection, flash on the internet, and bingo, you can get bombarded by all this information, you know, and you can handle it. You've got all this stuff that you're just instantly socializing with people with. You're just clicking away and you're typing away, and we, after all, now we've got texting and you can just check your text. You know, you can listen to it on your ears. You know, you can keep it always bombarding you without ever having to stop and think about what it is you just got bombarded with. That's the point. 90% of people going on the internet now are being overwhelmed with data and underwhelmed with intelligence. They are overwhelmed with data to where they don't know that they are being reactive to data and treating it as personification of themselves with their personality attached to it to become these cyber personas where they instantly react to words that should not have hurt them at all. I mean, it's not that sticks and stones will hurt my bones and words will never hurt me, because they do hurt. But the point is, the way that you're not thinking about what you're reading, the way that you're being whipped into frenzies by data overload, is another subject that we'll be discussing, because that will be the way that Christians get deceived. And that's the way that most people can jump on a bandwagon. Because right now, on the internet, the thing that catches people's eyes are pictures not words. And the things that people are getting easily snookered, fast shuffled, hacked, you could say, fishing, so to speak, in their spirit, is through picture, and then slipping some words in just different places, you know, within the context of what supposedly that was an accurate teaching. We'll show you that. That's probably the most dangerous thing of all. Because we all do it. A lot of people, when they read a book, don't read slow. They speed read. You see, God wants you to slow down, stand still, and see the salvation he brings. He wants you to back up, reevaluate, take into consideration the things that you're looking at with your eyes, the things you're hearing with your ears, and the things you're handling with your own hands. Because nobody forced you on the internet. And yet everyone's becoming living and breathing on it. So on Last Generation Network News, we take it serious about what we're doing. We're very skeptical about what's going on. We're very negative in some ways, which I treat as extremely positive about why we choose to teach you how to evaluate us as well as all the information you're being given on what used to be called the information highway, but I now call broad ban, and wide is the internet that's leading you to destruction. You need to narrow the focus down. You need to find the straight and narrow. Because otherwise, the last generation is going to be that generation that walks into the Valley of Miguel who doesn't have a clue why they're there except to be annihilated.